Hello and welcome to Toy & Stitches. Today we're going to be crocheting this beautiful v-neck tee with these gorgeous lace sleeves. We have a lot to get through, so let's dive in. To make my top, I'm going to be using Mary Maxim Mellow Spun DK. This yarn is 100% acrylic, but you can use any yarn and any fiber content you prefer. Just keep in mind that if you're using 100% cotton, it will be a little bit heavier and have less stretch. So just keep that in mind. Along with this, I'm going to be using a 4.5 millimeter hook. And then you will also need your scissors, tapestry needle, and a tape measure. So grab your supplies and let's get started. The first step will be to take our measurements. And the first measurement you're going to take is your bust measurement. You want to measure around the widest part of your bust and just ensure that the tape measure is going straight across your shoulder blades and not dipping down below. Next, we are going to measure our armhole depth. So you're just going to place the tape measure at the top of your shoulder and measure down to the opening of your arm. Now we will measure the top length. So you're just going to measure how long you want it to be from the top of your shoulder to where you want the top to end. And this can be from crop length all the way to tunic length. You just choose how long you want it to be. Now we're going to measure our arm length. Do this just like I'm showing you here from the center of your neck to your wrist. Do this in front of a mirror and the number at your wrist. Add two inches to account for when you put your arms down by your side. Now we're going to measure the depth of the neckline, just measure from the top of your shoulder to where you want the base of the v-neck to end. We're going to start off with our back panel and to get the width of our back panel we're just going to be dividing our bust measurement in half. So for this project I'm not going to be adding any ease so I'm just going to divide my bust measurement in half and for me my bust is 35 so if I divide that in half I get 17.5 inches. You can add ease to this project if you want it to fit a little bit more loosely but I wouldn't suggest adding any more than about two to four inches. So if you wanted to add some ease and say your bust is 38 and you add two inches, that would give you 40 and then you would divide that in half and your chain would be 20 inches long. So that's all you need to do at this point. You just need to divide your bust measurement in half and then make a chain as wide as you need it. So go ahead and make your chain and I'll meet you when I have my chain completed. All right, so I have my chain here and I've got my 17 and a half inches. And for me, that's about 67 chains, but however many chains you need to get to this to the width you need, so just go ahead and do that. And now we're gonna start row one and I'm not going to be using turning chains. So I'm going to be placing a stacked single crochet in my very first chain. So I'm just going to insert my hook under the bottom bump of my very first chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through two. I'm going to insert my hook under the two loops on the side of that stack single crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. And that is my that counts as my first double crochet. And now I'm just going to work a double crochet in each chain all the way across my row. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you at the end of the row. Okay, so I finished my row one. Now we're going to start on our row two. So we're going to turn our work and we're going to work a stack single crochet in the first stitch. So we're just gonna insert into that first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, insert our hook under the two loops on the side, just like that, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And then you're just going to work a double crochet in each stitch all the way across your row. So you're just going to go ahead and finish off row two. And once So I have finished my row two and our first step right now is to grab our tape measure and just measure how wide our two rows are. Right now I am up to 18 inches and if you're over what you want to do is just measure out how many stitches you're over and make a note of how many stitches you need to subtract. So for me, I'm over by two stitches. So I'm just gonna make a note that I need to subtract two stitches. So I would pull everything out and then just chain two less than I had before. So this is the point where you just wanna measure it out 
if you're short or over, determine how many stitches you need to add in or subtract and make a note of that because this is the point where you want to make any necessary adjustments to the width because from this point on, you're just going to be working your rows of double crochet until your piece is as long as you need it. So for me, I was only over by a half an inch, so I don't necessarily need to take anything out because it's only two stitches. But if you want to make an adjustment, now is the time to do it. So make your necessary adjustments and work your back panel until it's as long as you need it to be and I'll meet you to start the front panel. Our front panel is worked in exactly the same way as our back panel. So you're going to start with the same number of chains and you're going to end with the same number of stitches that you have across your back panel, across your front panel. The only difference is we just have to figure out how many rows we need to work before we get to the neckline where we start to shape the V. So I'm going to grab my whiteboard and I'm going to show you how to figure that out. Okay, so right here, what I've done is I've drawn out a little diagram of what our front panel is going to look like. So it's pretty much a big rectangle with a v-neck. So the first thing we want to do is put in the measurements that we need. So we know for me, my front panel is 17 and a half inches wide. So I made a note of that. And the total length of my front panel is 25 inches. The next thing you're going to want to do is put in how deep you want your neckline to be. So for me, I measured the depth of my neckline to be 10 inches. So I made a note of that there. So you just want to draw a little diagram like this, a rectangle with a V-neck, and then you want to write in your measurements. So your width, your length, and your neckline. And then once you have those three, you're going to put in this fourth number here, and that is subtracting the depth of the neckline from the total length of the top. So for me, my total length is 25. If I subtract 10, then that gives me 15 inches. And that 15 inches is how much I have to work before I get to my neckline. So for my little piece here, I would just continue working my rows until I have 15 inches. So that's what that means. Okay, so now we need to determine the width of the neck opening, because once we know that, then we, we will know how wide each shoulder should be. And one other thing I should have told you to grab was a t-shirt, but you can just watch and then go and do this later. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab a t-shirt, lay it out, and then you're going to measure the neck opening. So on mine here, it's giving me, what's that? We'll say about 6.5 like 6.75 but I'm just gonna go with 6.5 so now I know that my neck opening is 6.5 inches and now what I'm going to do is subtract this number from this number so if I subtract 6.5 from 17.5 I'm going to be left with 11 so 11 divided by two, I'm going to get 5.5. So each shoulder should be 5.5 inches. So once you have all of this written down on your paper, don't worry too much about these numbers just yet. We're going to work our front panel all the way up until we are at the point where we'll start doing our neckline. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how to map out making this angle right here and your shoulder. So I won't do everything at once. I'll kind of allow you to work and then we'll come in and we'll continue. So just go ahead, finish your front panel. I'm gonna get mine. I'm just gonna work my 15 inches. You work however many inches you have right here and then meet me back and then we'll start the neckline and shoulder shaping. Okay, so I've worked my 15 inches. And there's a few things we need to do before we start shaping our neckline. So you wanna grab that paper that you drew a little sketch on before and made all those notes because we're going to need that. So our first step is to figure out how many stitches we have here and then just divide those stitches in half. And once you do that, if when you divide it, you get it divided evenly, you're going to take your stitch markers and you're going to place them side by side right in the center of your top. 
If when you divide your stitches in half, you get say 8.5, you're going to end up with one stitch in the middle. So you're gonna have a stitch marker on one side, stitch marker on the other side, and then one stitch in the middle here, and you're just not gonna work into this stitch here. But if it's an even number, if when you divide all your stitches in half, you get an even number, you're just gonna put your stitch markers right in the middle, one beside each other, and you'll be able to work evenly across either side of your top. So once you've done that, the next thing we need to figure out is how many rows and how many stitches we have per inch. So you're gonna grab your tape measure, and just like if you were measuring a gauge swatch, just think of this as a giant gauge swatch, you're just going to measure how many stitches you have in one inch. I'm just gonna tape my tape measure here. And I have, so I have four stitches per inch. So I'm just gonna make a note of that. And then you're going to hold it the other way and figure out how many rows you have per inch. So for me, I have two rows per inch. So you just wanna do that and make a note of how many stitches per inch and how many rows per inch you have. So just write that down on your little paper. Okay, so now our next step is to divide the width of our top in half. And if I divide my 7.5 in half, it gives me 8.75, but I'm just gonna go with 8.5. So once I've done that, and this number is to help us to decrease one side of the neckline because we have to do the de decreases on either side. So we divide it in half, so now we have to figure out how many stitches we have to decrease on either side. So how to determine how many you need to decrease, you're not going to subtract the width of the shoulder from this number. So if I subtract 5.5 from 8.5, that's gonna leave me with three. So I know I need to decrease by three inches from this point to this point, I need to subtract three inches in order to get that V. So how do I know how many stitches that is? Because when I measured it out, and we figured out how many rows and stitches we have per inch, we're now going to multiply our three inches by four, which will give us 12. So now we know we need to subtract 12 stitches on either side of the front of our top in order to give us that nice V shape. And now what we need to figure out is how many rows we need to work from this point to this point to get 10 inches. So this tells us how many stitches we need to decrease. Now we need to figure out how many rows we need to work because then once we know how many rows we need to work, we can evenly space out our decreases to give us a nice clean line so it doesn't look jagged. So to figure out how many rows you need to work, you just need to multiply your rows per inch by the depth of your neckline. And for me, my neckline is 10 inches times two. I know I have to work 20 rows. So over 20 rows, I need to subtract 12 stitches. I hope I haven't lost you, just stay with me. So now these numbers here, these are my rows. So I have to work 20 rows. And in this 20 rows, I need to subtract 12 stitches. And I need to do that evenly so that my neckline is straight. So what I normally do is I would just do, I would just write a little X. So on my first row, I'm going to decrease. And on my next row, I'm going to decrease. And I just start out like that, writing my X's. And then once I get to the bottom, I will calculate how many stitches I have decreased and then sort of fill it in so that everything is nice and even. So at this point, I'm just saying I'm going to make a decrease every other row. And we're just gonna continue going down like that. So each X is a decrease. So how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now I need to add two more stitches. I need to subtract two more stitches because I know I need to subtract a total of 12 stitches. So what I will do is, to keep it nice and even, I'm just going to do another decrease on my first row and then on my final row. So now I know I have two, three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I have now evenly subtracted 12 stitches. So this is what you want to do. You want to okay, so now that we've done all our math, we have all our measurements, and we know where we're going to be putting our decreases, this is what we're going to need to do. So the first step is I'm going to turn my work, and I'm going to take out my stitch marker here. What you want to do is place a stitch marker on the side of the fabric that is facing you when you're starting your first side. Because when you start your second side, you want to be attaching your yarn with the same side facing you so that the stitches line up and you have the right and the wrong side of the stitches going the same way. So I'm just going to take this out. And on this side, I'm just going to place a stitch marker on this side because this is the side that is facing me so that when I attach to go on my other side, I know which side should be facing me. And now we also have to remember that all our increases are going to be on the inside of our fabric. We are not doing any decreases on the outer edge of the fabric. So just keep that in mind. All the decreases are happening on the same side. So to start, I am going to just work a stack single crochet in this first stitch here. And then I'm going to work a double crochet all the way across. And then because I know for my first row, I'm going to decrease by two stitches. I'm going to have, to, I'll show you what I'm going to do to decrease those stitches at the end here. So I'm just going to work across and I'm going to stop when I have four stitches left. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end of my row and I have four stitches left. So including the stitch mark here, one, two, three, four. So now I'm going to double crochet two together twice. So I'm just gonna yarn over, insert into my next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. There's two loops on my hook. I'm now going to yarn over again, go into my next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. Now I have three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. So right there, I have decreased by one stitch. So now I need to do that again, yarn over, insert into my stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops and leave two loops on my hook, yarn over, insert into my next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, pull through the last three loops on my hook. So now at the end of this row here, I have decreased by two stitches. So now I'm going to turn my work and work across this row and then come back and do my other decrease because I know I am decreasing every other row. So I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to work a stack single crochet in my first stitch here. And then I'm just going to work a double crochet in each stitch all the way across my row. Now I'm at the end of this row. I'm going to turn my work again and work back toward my neckline where I will do my next decrease. So at the beginning of the row, like before, just work a stack single crochet. And then I'm going to work a double crochet all the way across until I get to my last two stitches because I'm only going to be decreasing by one stitch from now on until I get to my final row. So I will meet you at the end of this row and work another decrease with you. All right, so I'm coming up to the end of this row where I'm going to be doing a decrease. And just like we did in our very first row, I'm just going to yarn over. So when you get to the point where you need to decrease, insert into your stitch, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook and leave the next two loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops and then yarn over, pull through the final three loops on your hook. And now you've decreased by one stitch. And that's how you're going to continue to work your decreases. However you mapped them out, as 
in the same way that I had showed you. You're just going to continue working your rows and your decreases all the way up your neckline. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that and then I'll meet you when I'm about to work my final two rows. Okay, so I'm almost finished the first half of my neckline. I have two more rows to work, but I just wanted to wanted you to look at how gradually I have started to create this angle. And this is what you want. As long as you're evenly spacing out your decreases, then this is what you're going to get. You're going to get a nice even slope up the neckline rather than it just going to one side and then sort of falling off on a shelf. So I have two more rows to work, so I'm going to come in, make one final decrease and this is my last decrease where I'm going to be decreasing by two stitches and then I'll finish off my final row. So you go ahead and finish off this side of your neckline. I'm going to do the same and then I'll come back and we'll start the second side of the neckline together. All right so now that we're ready to work on the other side of our neckline the first thing we want to make sure is that we can see the stitch marker that we placed into the front of our fabric when we were doing this side so we know that we're working on the correct side. So that's step one, make sure you can see that stitch marker. Step two, grab your yarn, make a slip knot and place that slip knot onto your hook. And now you are going to just insert your hook into your marked stitch. So whichever stitch you're supposed to be working into, place your hook into your stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull the loop through the slip knot on your hook. And you're gonna grab your tail and you're gonna tighten that up just to make a knot to join your yarn. And now I'm going to chain one. Now that I've chained one, I'm going to start working my stitches. But before you start working, be sure that however many decreases you worked on this side, you're working the exact number of decreases on this side. So for me, in my first row, I decreased by two stitches. So I need to now ensure that I'm doing the same thing on this side. So I'm going to yarn over, insert into the same stitch that I joined my yarn, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on my hook, yarn over, go into my next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. So now I have decreased by one stitch. So now I need to do this again. I'm going to yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert into my next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now I have mirrored what I've done on this side over here. I've decreased by two stitches here, and on this side, I decreased by two stitches, just so your decreases are happening on the same row on this side. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to finish off this row, work my second row, and then I'm going to start the third row with you because that is where I work my next increase. Because I'm working this row here, I didn't work a decrease here because I'm decreasing every other row. So I'm going to work this row and this row, and then I'll come back and do my next decrease with you. Okay, so on the first half of my neckline, all my decreases happened at the end of a row. And now on this side, all my decreases are going to happen on the at the beginning of the row. I'm going to show you how to do the decrease using the stacked single crochet. So we're gonna start the stacked single crochet like we normally would. We're just gonna insert into our first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops. And then now we're going to insert under the side like we normally would, yarn over, pull up a loop, and I'm gonna leave these two loops on my hook. Now I'm going to yarn over, go into my next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops. And then now I'm going to yarn over and pull through the last three loops on my hook. And that's how I work the decrease using the stack single crochet. I'm gonna pull it out and do it again for you. So starting the stack single crochet like we normally would, insert into our stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
yarn over, pull through those two loops, then insert under the two loops on the side here, yarn over, pull up a loop, stop there, yarn over and insert into your next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, and then yarn over, pull through the final three loops on your hook. And now I'm just going to finish off my row like I normally would and continue doing my decreases the same way I did on this side. And then I'm going to finish off this side and then we'll come back and we will work our sleeves. For our sleeves, we're going to be using a different stitch pattern. And this stitch pattern is worked over a multiple of 10 plus four. So for your starting chain, you're going to want to use your armhole depth and multiply that number by two. So when you took your measurements at the beginning, however deep your armhole was, for me, my armhole depth is seven. So when I multiply that by two, I get 14. So I'm going to need to chain a multiple of 10 until I get to 14 inches, and then I'm going to add four chains. So go ahead and do that, and then I'll meet you back to start row one. All right, so I have my chain, and once you have your chain and you're ready to go, our first step is going to be we're going to work a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So not counting the loop on your hook, you're going to go one, two, three, four, and into that fourth chain, we're going to work a double crochet. I'm going to be working into the bottom bumps of my chains. So I'm just gonna work a double crochet. And this chain three will be counted as a double crochet. So our next step is to chain one, and now we're going to skip four chains. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and into the fifth chain, we're going to work three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So into that fifth chain, we're gonna go one, two, and three double crochet, chain two, and then three more double crochet. One, two, three. And from this point on, I'm going to, going to be referring to this stitch right here as a shell. So we have one shell. So now what we're going to do is we're going to skip another four chains. One, two, three, four. And into the fifth chain, we're going to work a V stitch. But before you work your V-stitch, you will chain one and into the fifth stitch, you're going to go double crochet, chain two, and then another double crochet. Then you're going to chain one, skip four chains, one, two, three, four, and into the fifth one, you're going to work a shell which is three double crochets, one, two, three, chain two, and then three more double crochets, one, two, three, chain one, skip four chains, one, two, three, four, and then work a V-stitch, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one, and then work a shell, one, two, three, four, skip four chains, and then you work your shell. And that's what you're going to repeat all the way across your chain. You're going to, after each stitch, so this the pattern repeat is a shell and a V-stitch. So, you're going to work a shell. So that's three double crochets. Chain two, three double crochets. Chain one, skip four chains, and then work a V-stitch. And that's what you repeat. You work a shell, chain one, skip four chains, work a v-stitch, chain one, skip four chains, work a shell. And that's all you're going to do all the way across your row. So continue working across your row, working a shell, 
chain one, skip four chains, V-stitch, chain one, skip four chains, shell all the way across, and I'll meet you when I get to the end of my row. All right, so I'm coming up to the end of my row, and as you're about to finish your row, you're going to have five chains left. So all you're going to do is chain one, skip four chains, and then into the last chain, you're going to work two double crochets. And that's how you will finish off this row. And that's the end of row one. And now row two is going to be the row that we repeat for the length of our sleeves. So row two is our repeat row. So we're going to turn our work and I'm not going to be using turning chains. I'm going to be using stacked single crochets. So in my first stitch, I'm going to work a stacked single crochet and then a double crochet. So to work the stacked single crochet without chaining, you're just going to insert your hook into the first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. And now you're going to insert your hook under this loop right here and the one right behind it. So under that loop there, and the one right behind it like that, yarn over, pull up a loop, then yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. And that stacked single crochet is going to count as a double crochet. And now we're going to work another double crochet right into this same stitch. So each row will start with two double crochets. If you prefer to use a turning chain, all you would have to do is at the beginning of the row, chain three and then work a double crochet in the same stitch. Now, what we're going to do is chain one and we're going to work a shell right into the chain two space of the shell from the previous row. So we're just gonna yarn over and work our three double crochets. Chain two and then three more double crochets. Then we chain one and work a V-stitch into the chain two space of the V-stitch from the previous row. So that is double crochet, chain two, double crochet. And then what we're going to be repeating across the row is just chain one, working a shell into a shell. Then we chain one and work a V-stitch into a V-stitch. And that's the pattern repeat for this row. Chain one, work a shell into a shell. Chain one, work a V-stitch into a V-stitch. And that's all you're going to be repeating all the way across this row. So continue doing that and I'll meet you at the end of the row. I'm just about at the end of my row two. I've finished my last shell. So now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to find the top of the chain three from the or starting row. And I'm just going to yarn over and go under the top two loops of that top chain and work two double crochets. So if you're going to be using turning chains, just always remember that at the end of each row, you'll have to find the turning chain from the previous row and work into that top chain. But if you're not using turning chains, if you're going to be using the stack single crochets, like I am, you'll just work into the top of the very last stitch. So now from this point, we're going to be repeating row two. I'm going to work row two with you once more. So what you will do is turn your work and we work a stack single crochet in this first stitch here. So without chaining, insert into that first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. And then just turn your work to the side, go under that loop and the loop right behind it, like so. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops, and then work a double crochet in that same stitch. So now you have two double crochets in this first stitch here. We're going to chain one and work a shell into this shell right here. And now we're going to chain one and then work a V-stitch in the V-stitch from the row below. 
and we're just going to repeat that until we get to the end of the row. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you at the end of the row. I'm just about at the end of my row, so I'm going to chain one. And if you used a turning chain, just find the top of your chain three from the previous row. And if you used a stacked single crochet like I did, you're just going to work into the top of the stacked single crochet from the previous row and work two double crochets. All right, so our row three is finished. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna work two more rows and then I'm gonna come in, we're going to measure it out and I'll walk you through making any adjustments if you need to. So go ahead and work a couple more rows and I'll meet you back and we'll do some measuring. So I've worked a couple more rows on my sleeve. I'm up to about four rows and I find four to five rows is the perfect point to stop and measure it and see where you're at. So for me, I am right now up to about 15 inches. And with this, I wouldn't make any adjustments because with this stitch pattern, you need to be able to take out or add in one total stitch repeat, which is a V stitch and a shell. And I don't have enough room in one inch in order to make that adjustment. And I know one stitch repeat for me is two and a half inches. So if I'm over by an inch, I'm just going to have to live with that extra inch and I'm not going to make any adjustments. So if you're at this point and you've measured it out and you're over or short, here's what you're going to have to do. So you're going to take your tape measure and you're going to measure one stitch repeat, which is a shell and a V stitch. So you want to see how wide that is. So for me here, one repeat is about two and a half inches. And to get one repeat, you're going to need 10 chains. So that's what you want to do. You want to measure out a repeat to see how many inches that is, and then determine whether you are short by an inch or over by an inch. That is how you're going to determine what you need to decrease, because you can only subtract in multiples of 10 or add in multiples of 10. So if I were over by three inches, based on my measurements, I could only take out one repeat, which is undo everything and just minus 10 chains. And the reverse is true. If you needed to add in three inches based on my measurements here, so you'll just have to measure it all so you know what your measurements are, I could only add in one stitch repeat. So I would add in 10 chains. So that's what you want to do at this point. Just measure it out see how many inches you get in a stitch repeat and then thereby determining how many chains you need to add in or subtract in order to get your piece to the size that you need it to be because once you've started to work the full length of the sleeve you don't want to have to rip it all out so you just want to do it sooner rather than later to make sure that you're at the width that you want to be so now our next step is to figure out how long we need to make our sleeve so I'm just going to grab my whiteboard and just show you how to make those adjustments. So for the length of your sleeve, what you want to do is when you measured your arm length from the center of your neck to your wrist at the beginning, whatever that number is, you want to write that down. So for me, that number is 30 inches. So my arm length is 30 inches. And then now you want to subtract half the width of your back panel from this number. So my back panel is 17 and a half inches. And when I divide that in half, I get 8.5. It was 8.75, but I rounded, rounded down to 8.5 just because it makes it easier. So now what I'm going to do is subtract this number from this number. And that gives me 21.5. So this is how long I need to make my sleeve. So that's all you need to do. Whatever your arm length is, you want to subtract from your arm length half the width of your back panel. So just like I said, for me, my back panel is 17 and a half inches. I divided that number in two and got 8.5 and then subtracted the 8.5 from the 30. And then I now know how long I need to make my sleeve. So once you've done that quick calculation, then you can just continue working on your sleeve until you've achieved that length 
And what you want to do is you want to just make sure that once, you're, once you've started your sleeves, however many chains you made, once you've made all of your adjustments, write that down. Once you finish working the length of your sleeve, count your rows and write that down. So when you go to make your second sleeve, you know how many chains you need to work and how many rows you need to work without having to do the calculations all over again. So go ahead and make your sleeves and then I will meet you back when it's time to put it all together. When putting the pieces together, your first step is to sew your back and front panels together. And all you're going to want to do is to lay them flat and count the number of stitches across the top of your shoulder and then match the same number of stitches along the back panel and then just use stitch markers to hold the first and last stitches together. And then you're just going to sew this side and you're going to repeat the process on the other side. I will link a video here and I will also put the link in the description if you need help working the mattress stitch. But you can use any seaming method that you like. So go ahead and just sew your shoulders to the back panel on either side. And then I'll come back and walk you through attaching your sleeves and sewing up your side seam. When you're ready to sew on your sleeves, you want to have your top laid flat like this and then just lay your sleeve right up against it. And then your next step is going to be to just divide the measurement of your sleeve width in half. So my sleeve is 15 inches. So that's going to give me about seven and a half inches. So now I'm going to measure down the back of my top seven and a half inches. And then I'm just going to place a stitch marker right there. And then I'm going to connect the last stitch on one side of my sleeve to this stitch marker. So this last chain here, I'm just going to slip that onto my stitch marker because those two stitches are going to get worked together. And now you want to find the center of your sleeve. And usually for this, all you have to do is count your V stitches because you're going to end with more shells than V stitches. So for me, I have five across mine. So my third V stitch is the very center of my sleeve. So I'm going to connect this, the base of this one here, along the seam of my shoulder. And this is just to keep everything lined up nice and evenly so that when I sew my sleeve to my top, it's evenly laid on either side of my top, both top and bottom. And then you just want to do the same on the other side. Measure out the depth of the armhole and then just use a stitch marker to connect the sleeve to your top. Once I have my stitch markers in place, then all I'm going to do now, I'm just going to count how many rows I have down one side. So I have 15 rows. So on this half of my top, on the back half, I have 15 rows. So I now need to make sure that I have 15 rows on this side because the sleeve needs to be sewn evenly on the front and on the back. All right, and once everything is lined up nicely, then all you want to do is just sew one half down the back and one half down the front. And you just want to make sure that your chains are evenly spaced along the side. So I counted my chains and I have about 30 chains on this side and I have 15 rows. So for me, I'm going to be sewing two chains to each row along the back half of my top. And I'm going to do the same down the front. So you just want to measure everything out, count your rows, count your chains, and just evenly sew everything together. So go ahead and do that and attach your other sleeve. And then I'll quickly walk you through how to seam the sleeves and the top once you've sewn your sleeves to your top, now you're just going to sew the sleeves closed and you're going to sew your side seams. So all you have to do when you're sewing your sleeves, you want to just bring it together and match up the rows. So that's all you want to make sure when you're sewing your sleeve, you want to make sure that the rows line up evenly so it's not askew when you're done. So that's what you want to pay attention to when you're sewing your sleeves. And you also want to do the same thing when you're working your side seam. So for the sides, after you've attached your sleeves, you should have the exact number of rows unworked on the back and on the front. So you just want to make sure that you're sewing each row. So row one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth together, just so everything lines up nicely. So that's all you want to pay attention to when you're sewing your sleeves. 
and your side seam, you just want to make sure that the rows are lining up evenly. And also on my top, I left about four inches unworked at my hemline. You don't have to do this. You can seam the entire thing all the way down. But for me, I do like to leave a little slit on the side. So if you're going to do that, just measure out how deep you want it and then count that number of rows and place a stitch marker on both the front and the back so you know what you're not working into. But that's all it is. If you're and now that we have all our pieces sewn together, our final finishing step is going to be to work a row of single crochet around the neckline just to prevent it from stretching too much. So I'm going to start by I'm going to start working at the back. So I'm going to flip it over. And with the side that you're going to be using as the right side of your fabric, just make sure that's the side that is facing you. And I'm going to place a slip knot on my hook. And I'm going to be starting three stitches away from where the back meets the front. So this is the stitch here where I worked my last stitch from the front. This is where the join ends. So now I'm going to go one, two, three, and I'm going to start in this third stitch right here. I'm going to insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through both loops on my hook. So that's my first stitch. And I'm going to work a single crochet in the next stitch. And now I'm going to single crochet two together, this stitch and the side of the double crochet of the front of my top. So looking at it like this, this is the last row of the back and that is the first row of the front. So I'm going to go into this stitch right here, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then onto the side of this stitch here, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through both loops. And what this does, it just keeps the front and the back together without leaving a little hole. And now I'm just going to work evenly down the side of this, the side of the neckline, working two single crochet in the side of each double crochet. So just go ahead and do that. And then I'll meet you right at the bottom of the V here, because we're going to do another single crochet two together here, just to keep from having a hole in the middle here. So just work evenly down your neckline and I'll meet you right here. All right, so I'm just coming up to the last row that leads me right to the base of the V here. So I'm going to work two double crochet in the side of that row. That is one. And this will be two. And if you're like me and you had one stitch in the middle that you didn't work into, this is what you're going to do. So at the base, of the first stitch on this row here, we're going to work into that stitch again. And it usually has a fairly big hole in it because the stitches kind of pull up on that. So you're gonna insert into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, into the stitch you didn't work into, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then into the next one, which is where the first stitch of that row is worked into. We're gonna go into it again, insert, Pull up a loop and now you have four loops you're going to single crochet three together right there and all that does it just brings all those stitches together nice and tightly so it doesn't have gaps in the base of the neckline and then from this point you would just work evenly two stitches in each row going up to the neck but if you only had two stitches here so you didn't have a stitch in the middle it's going to be the same you're just going to single crochet two together these two stitches so you worked into it on this side and on this side when you were doing your neckline so you would just single crochet these two stitches together and then continue working up your neckline so go ahead and do that and i'll meet you there to finish off the row I'm at the point now where the front meets the back and I'm going to I'm on this last row of the front. So I'm going to work one single crochet. And then on the final single crochet of that row, I'm going to single crochet two together the base of this one with this stitch right here. 
So I'm just going to insert into the side of that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then into this stitch here on the neck at the back there, just yarn over and pull through all three loops, bringing those two together. And then now we're just going to finish off at the back here, and then I'm just going to show you how to join and finish it off. Okay, so I've worked my last stitch. This is my first stitch and this is my last stitch. I'm not going to slip stitch to the first stitch. I'm going to cut my yarn and then I'm going to do an invisible join just so I have a nice clean finish. So I've cut my yarn and I'm just going to pull the yarn all the way through. And then I'm going to place my yarn onto my tapestry needle. And now what we're going to do is, so this is where my yarn is coming from. This is the first stitch and then this is the second stitch that I made. I'm going to take my tapestry needle and go under the top two loops of the second stitch and pull that through. And then I'm going to go in to the top of this stitch. So the one that I pulled the yarn through into the top of that stitch and then through the side, the loop on the side right there. So you're gonna have your needle going under those two loops you're going to pull it through and then you're just going to pull it until the top of that stitch that you made looks the same size as your other stitches. So once you have it looking about the same size, you're just going to stop pulling on your yarn and you're just going to weave it in and then you're going to be all done. So you'll just have to weave in these last two tails and any other unfinished tails and then you're going to be all done and you're ready to wear your top. I hope you liked this tutorial. I truly appreciate you for watching. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, take care and bye for now.